All right, y'all. Continue escape week. ZZ the King. Like and subscribe. <clears throat> Excuse me. Add me on Facebook, Zach King, social media site. Now, continue with my escape week. The week almost over. I got a special one for y'all today. We got escape room two. Tournament of Champions, or TLC if for short. You know what I'm saying? In the escape room community, they call it TLC too. Anyways, we got with this one, I don't know if we're going to get a part three because they had a um, budget of $15 million and the box office was $66 million. And this came around COVID, so that could have contaminated the numbers, no pun intended, but... The writer and director said part three, if that's going to come out, it's going to be based upon the numbers. The first movie had a budget of $9 million and made 155 When they seen that, Paramount Green lit the sequel instantly. That movie, to me, was a movie that it was a passion project that turned out brilliant and made way more than they expected. With that, they came out with this with a bigger budget, expecting a bigger profit, and it just didn't happen. That don't mean the movie ain't good or it ain't going to be a part three because they got a franchise if they really want to force it. The cast is, um, to be honest, it's a little lesser than the first one, but it got Zoe, um, that's Taylor Russell reprising her role as Zoe, and we got Logan Miller as Ben again, and then we got, um, India, um, Moore, that's Brianna, we got a couple more characters, the cast ain't so memorable where I'm gonna name them all like I did the first one, but we got a couple more characters in this, this like I said is TLC, Tournament of Champions, which means all the contestants, it's six contestants again, all of these contestants are victors from previous games basically, escape rooms, so the movie kicks off basically with a no saying on the last episode of Type, it shows you if you never seen one or if you did. It shows you basically like a like a previously on type of montage where it's talking, it's going through what happened in the first movie, and um, even in that movie, it has a scene that's connected to this, and I'm gonna get to it when it happened. But it starts off with the you know what I'm saying showing what happened in the first movie, then it, it pans to Zoe and Ben. They had lunch how the last movie ended, so it picks up from that scene. They had lunch eating. She told me, "Let's take um the company I didn't mention. I called them the All C and I. That wasn't me making a mistake. That's my." personal interpretation of them, like the Eagle Eye from the movie Eagle Eye. But this is the Manos Corporation, maybe Minos. Anyway, it's the Manos Corporation. They the people who behind basically like Umbrella for Resident Evil franchise. They behind all of the escape rooms and the games, the puzzle masters, the, the game instructors, all of that. They run it. And they are like Illuminati governmental type of figures. So they any and everywhere. So as they talking about Ben and um, Zoe talking about taking them down, she got all these coordinates and stuff where she like, we need to go to this place. Maybe we can get the cops on it. So then it pans to her going to her little therapy session, talking to the therapist. This was a big ass red flag and I'm going to get to it when it come. But she's talking to her therapist. Her therapist is telling her she got like... Aerophobia, meaning the, the fear of flying from the plane car, I said plane car, the plane crash she was involved in, which took her mom away. So her, um, therapist talking to her, finessing her, trying to get her on the plane. That's when we get to, um, Ben and Zoe. They like, all right, we finna go handle the business. Ben and Zoe ain't like a love interest that you would expect for it to happen. They more like best friends without no sexual chemistry. And I like that. It's no reason. I'm glad part one didn't end on a kid, them kissing. I'm glad that they are like solid day one, see each other and not love interest. That took me out of it. Even though this is the kind of shit that you could fall in love from, it just wouldn't have worked for me. Anyways, once they get to the area that they got the coordinates, because she's been doing all this research about them, they get to that area. That's when um the movie happens, basically. It's this little... 
a plant, basically. It's just this guy come out of nowhere, like, what y'all doing in this area, woo, woo, woo. Then he like, I'm hungry. I can show y'all what y'all want if y'all, you know what I'm saying, buy me some food. Once he get close enough to him, he snatches Zoe's little necklace. That's the last thing she had from her mom before her mom died. They give a big-ass little action chase after him. He running through subways, run on the train, run off. He finessed them and get them locked on the train and it speeds off. He got the necklace. This was like Squid Game, the guy that, you know what I'm saying, slapped you to get you involved in the game. This was that moment. He was the mark to get them on the train. Once they get on the train, for one, you could tell, okay, this is, knowing the movie, knowing how movies work, you know, this finna, something finna happen. Because the train ain't overpopulated like a normal New York subway train should be. It's like six people on there, which is the contestants. Being Zoe and a few characters I named. One of them named Nate. He a priest, some guy. He cool. And then we got the Brianna character. She like a socialite. We got this other character. I forgot what she did because these characters, I'm going to be 100. They're not as memorable as the first one. The first one had character development, flashbacks, Things to make you like or dislike them. All these ain't no secondary antagonists like um Jason was in the first one. They all very likable, but it's no flashback to see their tragic accident because they didn't have one. They ain't the probability lucky of the luckiest in this. They are all tournament of champion survivors. So we don't really know nothing about them, but we know they're damn survivors at the bare minimum. But that's all we get with these characters. The first game is I got the same title as I had from the first movie. I don't got no elaborate plan or name for them. I'm just calling this Electrify train because when they get on the train it's on some final destination shit it derails it bunks into an area where they want them to be off the track that's when this game is basically you got to find clues throughout the um, subway station train that they own. It's a bunch of misspelled words or letters missing from words you know what I'm saying once they figure that out that's how they get themselves ejected out of the train to the next level. The problem with it is it's an electrified train. So every few minutes, it's, zzz, you know what I'm saying? It's electrified. They're going to die from electrocu electrocution, getting electrocuted. So it's a nice little intense moment. Some of the characters are like, you know what I'm saying? They give a little minor little talk before they, you know what I'm saying, get the game started, but nothing major until this particular game is over. One of the characters, this Hispanic cat, I forgot his name, I'm sorry, but since it's so electrified, they got to use rubber to, you know what I'm saying, get around. Rubber, you know what I'm saying, negates the electricity so he touches the pole throughout all the shocking mechanisms going off it start going haywire the more they solve the puzzle the more the electricity going off and the time running out so he touches the pole on accident it shocks him so unlike the first movie everybody survived the first room in the first movie this one catch your body instantly because it's number two gotta be more gory gotta be a bigger body count gotta be a bigger budget gotta 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 type shit so the next room we get to, this is the comparison, in my opinion, as the upside down bar room. They get to the bank room. Now, this is a smooth ass trap. It got lasers on some Ocean Eleven type shit. You know, all movies do that. James Bond 007 type of lasers. Either it's going to laser your ass like Resident Evil, another reference to that, or it's going to be an alarm. If it's not the laser that's going to cut you it's a laser that's going to be an alarm. Anywhere it go, you can't go nowhere near it. The aim in this game... It's to solve the little clues throughout the movie. It's like a bowl of lollipops. They got to keep breaking them to get the keys. Once they get the bank vault open and solve these particular um, um, riddles, it's a stack of unmarked bills, like a blood, like money. And then it's the diamonds that's sharp enough to cut you on contact. So they figure out blood money. They put that together, get the code. Bam, that's when they let them out. But one of the characters, Brianna, she get, you know what I'm saying, sliced up. I mean, you know what I'm saying, laser cut to her little back of the shoulder. And then the priest, unlike, he ain't being godly. He like, I'm going to put God in my hand. And he just started not even participating with the group on some, you know what I'm saying, self delete type shit he started walking around the lasers and done not knowing which one gonna go off but god was on his side he was lucky but for me that made me not like him the priest we get to the third room i thought these these traps was aesthetically more pleasing than the first movie i'm gonna be honest that's the thing that i can't say a step up for the first one i thought the trap 
visuals was better in part two than one, even though it was more intense and the characters are way more likable and way more you enthralled into the character, not the movie and the traps. Like one, we didn't know what we was in for. Two, we know what the fuck we here for by this point. But this was like a beach sand, quicksand type of trap where they got to get the anchor, solve. So it's everything is about solving riddles, solving puddles, puzzles to get to the lighthouse. Once they get the um quicksand and they figuring it out, it start bubbling up and start quicksand, quicksand sucking them in. It sucks one of the characters up and then the priest goes in after. He saved her life, but uh, in doing that, he get too entangled in the quicksand and he's taken out. He died. That's another room, another death. He supposed to die in the bank vault when he was on some fuck shit, but by him dying here, I was like, okay, y'all gave us what we wanted. Y'all That dumb shit made us feel like, okay, he deserved to die anyway, and he died in this one. The next one, also during this particular trap, it had two particular exits, because one thing I got to say about this that's less than suspenseful, and I hate to be a da Debbie Downer, but the fact that being as Zoe was in it, it kind of made me, it took me out of it, because it's like, Okay, these two are going to be the main characters of the franchise. They're the main stable. This is some Hermione and, um, uh, and Harry Potter type shit. They safe. Even if they particularly die, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be dramatic, but it just felt like they were safe the whole movie, personally. Compared to the first movie, you didn't know who the main character was. You kind of knew it was Zoe, but you didn't know it was Ben, and... It just worked better. In this one, she's smarter than everybody. She solve everything easier. She ain't no Mary Sue or nothing because she a college smart chick anyway. But it just seemed like her main character presence was way more visible in this from the first one. Like she felt a little safer to me because she's trying to solve the whole trap of the house. Fuck getting out of this um quicksand room they get out they find the clues to get out the room for the next game she find the clues to get out the entire game so they take different exits that's where a few of the characters all follow zoe and then the brianna character she go out the mainstay door so when they do that they all time running out quicksand getting deeper and then the um the um Lighthouse ladder is starting to enclose. Like, if you ain't at the top before the um, bars go in, you fuck. So that's what happens with the Ben character. And I was pissed. I ain't gonna lie. When Ben died, you hear flashbacks from the first movie of all the trials and tribulations they've been through. All their friendship that been built up over, I guess, the year or two or whatever. And it's a sad moment for Zoe. The other motherfuckers is just like another death to them. But to Zoe and the fans, we looking at this like, damn... Why they couldn't kill one of these other bitches besides Ben? That's how I felt personally. So once they snap Zoe out of her little mesmerized, you know what I'm saying, sad moment, they get to the um acid room. Once they coming up, they thinking the tournament is over because they think they come into the city. It's like a nor normal looking city, but it's inside the enclosure of the game. So once they realize they're in the game, Zoe like... I guess we got another one. This is the acid rain, where that's when the Brianna character, out of her exit from the last game, she meets him. Like, don't shut the vault, because they came out the sewer. She said, don't shut the sewer. I guess that was going to be an alternate way of getting back out. So once that locked, the game begins. The net aim in this game, basically, is to find all the clues, and every, like, 10 seconds, it, adds, it rains acid. If you ain't in a certain protected area where the acid, it's like certain umbrellas that the acid won't burn through. Certain areas you can get to where acid won't burn through. But if you in the open or anywhere the acid will get through, you fucked. So, hold on. So, the Brianna, the other chick, redhead chick, she like the Amanda for this movie. And then the Zoe, they figuring the clues out. They getting it. They getting. They, it's a cup that don't bu get burned by acid. A certain kind of plastic. They get the clues. Get on the phone. Get the clues. They get in the taxi cab because it's basically like a phone. It's a New York strip set up, but it's a phone and a taxi cab as the main two go betweens for the game. So they going from back and forth. Once Zoe get in the cab after they get all the clues, the other chicks are it locks, meaning. They supposed to all got in at once. It never was supposed to be just Zoe. But since they didn't know that, when Zoe got in, it locks. It's a one-time shot. So they basically 
The other chick, Brown, and the other chick just in the rain. No way to get back into the um phone booth because that locks. No other exit. No other protecting from the acid. I thought personally they should have got under the taxi cab, but maybe that's just me overthinking it because I ain't in a moment. When People always make these how to beat videos years and months later. When you in the moment of death, two minutes to solve life, life or death moments, I probably wouldn't even thought go under the taxi cab. No, I would have. But still, in life and death moments, you think you a tough ass nigga, then a nigga pull a gun out you. Even if you got your Drake on you, you might freeze up and don't pull it out. I'm just saying certain situations, real life happen. You could freeze up. We know how our mind work. Fight, flight or fucked. And um, they was fucked. They died. Once that game over, the taxi opens up, shoots Zoe down. That's when we get the bullshit to me, where the movie kind of don't make sense. Because now it make it like no death matters, because now Amanda appears. I purposely didn't mention Deborah Ann character, because I tried to be a spoiler for y'all. She is another mainstay from the first movie where you thought she died in the upside down bar room where I told y'all she is hanging on the um, phone cord. It snapped and she died. They show that flashback where it's an illusion on some Mysterio Spider-Man shit where once she fell down the elevator shaft, it had an illusion where she fell basically into a bed. And it was just like that took the emotion out of that moment right then and there. So... She like, yeah, they broke me. You know what I'm saying? They in like a kitty child, like a child, a girl, a daughter, a girl's room. And then she like, yeah, they got my daughter. They made sh Amanda tell her exposition why she alive and why she here. Basically, they got my daughter. They made me design a game. They make all the winners or stuff like that or people who they can break, make the games and woo woo woo. A bunch of bullshit. I didn't really like none of that. I thought it'd been better if she was dead. Maybe this could have been Zoe's cousin or a family member that we didn't know. Just a family member like her auntie who took her in when her mom died. Something like that. It had been a bigger impact to me than Amanda. Anyways. It's Amanda. Then we see my um nigga Ben. I was happy to see he was live, but I was like, damn, okay, this is Marvel now. No death is permanent. You know what I'm saying? Because he alive. And that's when they got a quote like, if you didn't see it, it didn't happen. Some Illuminati ass shit. Third eye ass shit, Geechee. So that's when he in a room, basically, in a drown, you know what I'm saying, submerged type of, it's basically a normal jail cell type of room that's going to fill up with water. And if Zoe don't figure out the clues of the case to get him um, saved, he dead and he going to drown. Either she can submit to them or she can try to be a super bitch hero. And she choose B, super bitch hero. So she looking around the room for clues. She see the fireplaces ignited to a, a fire system and a pole system. She um telling Amanda like, the water filling up, being drowning. He banging on the glass. He can't get out. He like, this ain't no trap. This is just a death trap. Ain't no clues in here. So that's when she on her Mary Sue moment at this. She tears the pipe out because Amanda going into shock. Like, they got me. They broke me. She ain't really no assistance at this point as she was in the first movie. You know what I'm saying? So Zoe get to breaking the pipe out, starts a big ass flame fire. It starts to disaparate and no saying no saying negate the water from drowning them once the whole room she makes a no saying carry type of fire where it's a domino effect how the pipe system run she blows the whole motherfucking place down I was kind of offended because I thought the game masters were too strong too smart for this kind of shit but I'm going to get to that in a moment. So when she busts him out, it's a big ass fire. It busts the, uh, the um, fish tank he was in, basically. They revive him real quick. Amanda, um, Zoe, and Ben running out the facility. That's when all the police, feds, everything come to the scene. They got motherfuckers arrested. She, this, Zoe got what she want. She finally got exposure to the Manos Corporation. Big bosses going to jail is satisfactory. I'm like, damn, Zoe a bad bitch. So then, happy ending. She like, you know what, Ben? We done been through two of these motherfuckers. We finally, this shit on TV, CNN, NBC, Fox News. We, we Gucci. We ain't got to worry. We ain't finna drive nowhere. We finna hop on a plane. 
This is where I connect part one to two. I said this. They had this trap and plan for Zoe if they ever can get her on a plane. They've been practicing this plane disaster trap for years, basically. That's how I said the first one in. They had them. Her therapist told her at the beginning, what can get you on a plane? And she told her. First, Zoe didn't want to ask her a few times. Not like she was thinking the therapist was on some fuck shit. She just was like, what I really want, she just wouldn't ask her. And when she finally asked her, she said, I wanted them to go down, the world to know, them to be exposed, and that's it. When she got on the airplane, when, she, when I said they took them down, they got exposed, she felt comfortable enough to get on the plane. That's when she heard a phone ringing from her therapist that rings every time the session over. She walks up to her, and they give Zoe a little ass shot that I thought was not. I don't know why I said that, but she walks up to her therapist. Her therapist looking at her like she don't even know her. That's when you hear the game master, Aussie and I, the Manos Corporation boss. Like, how you doing, Zoe? No, I said, it's been a while. Is this real enough for you? You said you want to make sure we was exposed and it's real. Well, is it real enough for you? And it cuts to black. That cliffhanger was even better than the first one to me. Because the first one ended, you knew she wasn't getting on the plane. But her making her full final statement of she want them to be exposed, that ending did it for me. Because the movie was good. But the ending was so great for me personally, I got to get this one a seven. It's right under the first one. The first one an eight. This one is a seven. Escape Room 2. TLC 2. Tournament of Champions. I got a fucking banger tomorrow to conclude the week with Escape Trap Week. Stay tuned. ZZ the King. Like and subscribe. And I'm out.